Whilst the plains of the savannah provided ample food for the animals that grazed there, it was also sparse of trees, and the lack of hiding spots must make it dangerous at night when the giant spiders come out to hunt. I frequented the dirty slopes to collect chicken eggs, milk the cows, and shear the sheep there. Currently, my relationship with the herds was unilateral, and since I had realised that they probably weren't pilfering my crops, I thought it was only right that I try and provide something back. My previous two attempts hadn't received much attention, so, for the third time, I got to working on the hole in the ground I had envisaged to be a safe place where the animals of the plains might want to stay. The merchant had come to visit me again, but as I approached him, I saw that he was being held hostage by a skeleton donned in leather armour that shielded it from the sun. Twobone and I leapt to the merchant's defence, but in my fervour, I accidentally swiped Twobone with my new iron sword. Clearly, I was still getting used to it. With the skeleton defeated, I completely ignored the merchant, instead giving Twobone a handful of zombie flesh and my sincerest apologies. The merchant could see that it was an accident, but was quick to comment on how I needed some practice in animal handling. I don't think he would have joked about it if Two Bone was really hurt. He suggested I take tips from the way he treated his own animals, and the llama stared disapprovingly at me too. Okay, I get it. Two Bone continued to stand by my side with his usual stupid smile on his face, although ever so more placidly than normal, and I felt shame. I didn't mean to hit you, Two Bone. I should have ignored the merchant's jibes but instead tried to impress him by explaining my plans to build a barn for some of the animals in the area, which the merchant appeared to find quite funny. I hadn't got any more emeralds since I'd purchased fish from the merchant, and that was some time ago. I think he knew that, but visited me anyway, either to encourage me to earn more by flouting his wares, which was working, or because he liked my company. He always had something to say, and today he had actually intended to compliment me on my efforts to help the grumpy village. No, they hadn't said anything nice about me, but just gifting me the sword was quite significant. Of all the villages in the area, they were by far the most insular and even secretive, which didn't lend itself to making friends. That said, he added that they weren't happy with me now that others were also referring to them as the grumpy village. Hang on, I hadn't been going around saying that, so who was? He didn't acknowledge my comment, but did say that my name for the great mountain, Welcome Peak, was also being adopted in the area. Exasperated, I squeezed out a gracious farewell. His attempts to playfully antagonise me had worked, and I was determined to prove him wrong next time he came back. When he sees just how much the animals of the dirty slopes enjoy the barn, that will show him. My designs for the barn had been inflated following the merchant's provocations, and I had run out of wood. It was time for another trip to Oak Island. Twobone was happy to return to where I had found him, although he seemed happy to do anything, especially since I had been overcompensatory in my fusses to make up for things. When I arrived, my propensity for building was in full flow, and in between gathering wood, I also built a stone hut at the surface entrance to the dock, as well as refurbished down below. I replanted the trees as I went and collected a bunch of apples in the process. I found that some of the foliage remained attached to the other trees, obstructing the sunlight from the saplings and generally looking messy. Climbing up each tree when this occurred was a painstaking job. I had an idea for an easier fix, but would need some iron. I lapped Oak Island three times in search of some, but no luck. There was an ominous underwater cave where there might be some, but I didn't see an easy solution to that problem. So, Two Bone, Nelly and I took the boat and set off to investigate nearby. A great excuse for a little exploration, and I took out my map. As I searched for iron, I came across a number of oddities that captured my attention. One small sandy islet near Oak Island contained a plethora of different flowers. I met a turtle, 
and a donkey, but still no iron. It wasn't until I started heading back towards the mainland that I found some on one of the thin rocky outcrops. Only a single piece, but that was all that I needed. I docked back in my cove and conferred with Nelly to make flint and steel. Knowing what I intended to do with it, she was hesitant, but I assured her nothing would go wrong. In the night, the fire of the foliage illuminated the surrounding area. I only wanted to remove what was needed and tempered the flames by quenching it when it spread too far. That was until I was interrupted. A host of monsters descended on me, maybe attracted by the fire, and before long the flames were out of control. I even became separated from Two Bone, which then became my priority, and by the time we were reunited, most of the fires had fizzled out, leaving a mangled grove behind. That was when the merchant appeared. I stood sheepishly in the aftermath of my mess, and this time I felt like I deserved the ridicule. The merchant must have seen the fire from miles off. His mockery was always delivered with an air of levity, which on this occasion actually improved my mood. He supposed, correctly, that I wouldn't have the emeralds to purchase some of his saplings. Only after he left did I realise that as big as the fires were, he would have had to have been somewhat close by to notice them. Before heading back home, I replanted the area with saplings and thought about all the clever responses I could have said to the merchant's snide remarks. I fondly surveyed all the iron that was readily available to me on my doorstep, and without further ado, I got back to my work on the barn. As I fitted the roof, I broke through the top of the hill. The barn had grown a tad bigger than I originally thought, and I had already had to cover the sides of the hill with some of the excavated dirt, in what could only be described as questionable landscaping. The roof, however, was a happy surprise, and a good excuse to let some natural light into my budding sanctuary. With most of the core structure finished, I could turn my attention to the plumbing. Extending the well was easy enough without disturbing the flow to the farmhouse, and I tried to make a water trough so that it couldn't also be used as an extended swimming pool. Whilst waiting for the sand I was popped in the furnace to cook, I planted the flowers I'd found on my trip, and built a fence to allow the future residents to safely graze. As I went to add the finishing touches to the barn, I was graced by the merchant's presence once again. I was somewhat stunned to see him again so soon, and jokingly asked him if he was following me. Distracted by his wares, I longingly looked at the things I couldn't have, and again failed to think of a comeback when he told me that someone had to stop me getting into trouble. The merchant had arrived a few moments too early, as I wanted to show him the barn once it was finished. As we spoke about this and that, he chugged down an invisibility potion in the last light of the day. The time for safe building was over, but I was determined. After filling the barn with a stockpile of hay, and fitting the plumbing with glass, I was amazed to find a cow had just waltzed in, like their new home was ready for inspection. I looked around the room, grinning, almost expecting a round of applause for my success. My shock at finding the cow appear from apparent thin air was followed by a greater shock when two creepers also found their way in. Terrified the creepers blast my arm the cow, or the barn, I turned tail and fled. I spent a moment inside the farmhouse to collect myself, but was once again alarmed when I saw Two Bone wandering around outside. After meeting him on the roof of the barn, I found the structure acted as a sort of battlement to the south and east. This was my home, and I would defend it. I scoped out my enemy and chose my first arc of attack, but was swiftly repelled by a horrific sight. A skeleton was riding a spider. Having fled again, I got out of myself and ventured out. Third time lucky, and it was. I jeweled the rider before clearing the nearby plains as the sun rose on my homestead. 
Whilst I had struggled to fight off the monsters, I had lost where the merchant had got to, and looked down in disappointment when I found him and his two llamas stuck at the bottom of my farm's irrigation. This wasn't the first time the llamas had got themselves stuck down there, and I wonder if the merchant had had his own struggle that night as he tried to get them out. In the end, that task fell to me, and I begrudgingly started to systematically remove stone to free the encumbered beasts. I could see why this may have been more difficult than last time, when a stray hoof belonging to a frightened cow struck my breastplate. When the merchant, his two llamas, and the hefty cow were freed, they all came tumbling down the water flow, with me on the bottom. The merchant's nonchalant demeanour hadn't been dampened by being stuck in my plumbing, and as he surveyed the state of my kitchen, he acted as if I was the foolish one for not releasing them sooner. I couldn't help but grin. Under different circumstances, I might have made him dinner. Fish's graceful strokes seemed ever so slightly more skittish in the presence of the hullabaloo caused by the herd of three that was crashing around the basement. At least none of them decided to take a drink from her pool, and I think she was probably relieved when the merchant announced it was time for him to depart. But before he did, I noticed him admire Fish's home. Unfortunately, the merchant's exit was blocked by the alarmed cow, who refused to step outside. We spent all day trying to coax the animal, but the cow appeared unable to leave the safety of the farmhouse, and the merchant rightly pointed out that we couldn't just leave it here. I tried to calm the cow. It's okay, we're safe. The cow just stood shivering. When the merchant suggested that the monsters could take the same route we'd entered the kitchen, the cow started to panic again. I took a deep breath and collected my thoughts, in part to stop myself glaring at him. But he was right. Even after replacing the iron bars, I didn't fancy having to remove a creeper if it ended up on the other side. I had an idea. I think the merchant was impressed when I took to knocking down my kitchen wall. I must have appeared to be very committed to helping this cow. If I had measured correctly, I should be right next to the... the wall of the barn. The far braver cow greeted me as I broke through. I had spent all night finding my way through to the barn, and it was time for the merchant to properly depart my company. He acknowledged that maybe I had more of an affinity with animals than he originally thought, and as he turned to leave, he gifted me a lead. I soon realised that also meant I had the gift of babysitting the llamas for a few days until he collected them. It seems I had provided the merchant with a microcosm of adventure, and I think he enjoyed it. Even though he always found a way to get under my skin, I was grateful for his camaraderie since the fire. For now, though, I wasn't lacking for company, as Poof and Shudder had moved in, although one was more respectful than the other. Shudder still refused to leave the farmhouse, and it seemed Fish would have to get used to her new bunkmate. I genuinely felt like I'd been caught with my pants down when the merchant turned up on Oak Island. Not opposed to having others tag along for the ride though. And um, apologies for some of the jarring third person shots in this one. I think something was up with the frame rate, the rendering, maybe. Not 100% sure. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you everyone and I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs>